Hi, I'm Dr. Hankenstein, and today we're going to look at fractal Lichtenberg wood burning techniques. Fractal wood burning, or Lichtenberg uh, wood burning, is the application of high voltage on pieces of wood that produces, can produce these very beautiful uh, lightning type of burns in the wood. There's a lot of uh, discussion about that on the YouTube channels, but there's not very much discussion on how to make the power supply. So Uncle Fred called me up and he said, well, you know, I'm interested in trying this out. And, and how, did, how did you go about doing the power supply? And I was like, well, I don't know. Let's take a look and figure out how these folks are doing it. So what we did in this particular case, and keep in mind that when you're uh, messing around with high voltage or any kind of voltage for that matter that it can kill and it can cause serious injury so we like to take as many precautions as possible being that the leads are uh, in the open position and uh, and death or injury can result uh, if we get an accidental contact so keeping that important stuff in mind First of all, we needed to find out what kind of a power supply we needed. So it looked like the consensus was that there was uh, people using neon sign transformers, such as the kind found in, in beer signs and uh, neon signs, etc. Uh, the other kind would be uh, out of a microwave oven, the microwave oven transformer. I personally would shy away from microwave oven transformer for the uh, simple reason that uh, the current, the output current of the microwave oven transformer, although the voltage is lower, usually around 2,000 volts, the current is easily uh, 10 times higher than any neon tr uh, sign transformer. So uh, I'd rather uh, burn with fine amount of current than uh, the higher the current, the bigger the ball of fire. So. Uh, that your results may not be as pretty so and it's a lot safer to use like a neon sign transformer in this case we did not have a neon sign transformer we had what's called an ignition transformer and here's a close-up of one we have here notice it's uh, the primary is 120 volts and the secondary is 6,000 volts and notice the uh, current 25 to 20 milliamps so we've got 20 25 milliamps of output current here's right here is the uh, uh, output terminal. There is the ground terminal, so it's a single winding. Most neon transformers will have two high voltage um, uh, bushings. This one only has one, and we can unscrew this nut here and put our high voltage cable in there. We'll discuss a little bit about high voltage cables also. And so that's the high voltage side. The uh, This is the low voltage side, the input side, where the 120 volts would go in. And what I did on, on ours, we uh, used the same exact transformer. We happen to have two of them laying around. And then we used a, a knife switch right here. You can see this knife switch, kind of handy dandy. But it's dangerous because you have uh, 120 volts at these terminals right here. Um, so in all cases, you must wear uh, proper uh, uh, protective uh, uh, gloves, rubber gloves, that kind of thing if you're going to be messing with uh, high voltage and having open uh, voltage and current uh, laying right in front of you. So uh, what we did is you can see right here we bought a, uh, a night light at the, the hardware store. You can get them at Walmart and stuff like that and what we did is splayed the terminals back and, uh, and placed them across the terminals that go, go and feed the input to the transformer. So uh, that way we have, uh, when we have, we have a visual open here for safety, we can see that no voltage is going into the transformer because the switch is open. And the other thing is, is um, when we put the switch down, now we have visual indication that, that this lead right here, that lead is hot. There are 6,000 volts to ground at that lead right, right there. So if I take this and touch it against, you can see, you can see we have considerable high voltage there. 
So when the switch is in the off position, uh, their voltage is gone. So that, that's a good safety feature is that we have visual open and we have also have visual indication. Now to make it even a little bit more safer, what we did is uh, we went to, to Harbor Freight and um, we bought this foot switch right here, which is uh, uh, was only about 15 bucks and it's kind of nice you put your when you put your foot on there it, you can it, it's made for like uh, turning drill presses on and off and machinery and that kind of stuff there's a little uh, plug on the side and a plug in the back where, which goes up to our power supply and a useful part of that is is that uh, let's say we have our switch closed and we still you have to push on the foot switch see to to make the uh, the current come on so the operator and only the operator will be able to turn the uh, uh, high voltage on and off. Now another thing we did is uh, let's talk about the high voltage cables. These are not high voltage cable. These are merely uh, 600 volt uh, conventional uh, pieces of wire. That is probably not enough if you're not all uh, what we call rubbered up which means you have uh, uh, rubber gloves uh, for the appropriate voltage to make these these figures that you're looking at here. So um, let's look at the, what what might be a better choice of wires to use and uh, we'll do that here. Probably the best choice would be this what's called GTO wire. It's a uh, it's gaseous tube outdoor wiring and notice the voltage rating on it. 40 kV after this wire. This would probably be the, the, the wisest choice to use from this output terminal here to this uh, uh, connection right here. If that's not an, an option and not available, uh, another option which would be a good choice would be to, you know, here's a, here's a piece of coax cable from like a CB radio or, or, or a ham radio uh, place can, you can get this. What I would recommend is it's called um, Mini 8 RG Mini RG8 is, I believe, the the type of uh, coax cable you can use. And what you do is you take the outer insulation off, you take the shield off, and the inside is a nice, thick, clear uh, piece of cable that uh, that uh, has a, a pretty high voltage withstand. Uh, I'm not sure if it's good for for uh, 6,000 volts or or so, but it's it's a, a lot better than the 600 volt wire on these wands. Now how we made the wands is kind of interesting in itself is uh, we uh, we went and got us a battery charger like this one right here and notice that it comes with a couple of couple of clips and the clips are actually pretty pretty handy as, as the, you can hold you can see from the end that you can uh, put nails and you can clip it onto stuff well in, the, in this particular case I did not need uh, the clips on the battery charger since I was using the other loops so they were spares so what I did is I bought this uh, this uh, couple short pieces of PVC put a cap on the end and made a wand so you can see that I took the uh, plastic off of one end right here uh, on this part right here and, and it just slips right over the the wire for a good contact and a lot of times I noticed in some of the videos that the negative wire, which would be the ground right here, that'd be this wire. They actually drive the nail right into the into the work to do your work. So uh, there you have it, kind of in a short, uh, little, brief video to describe uh, some safety features you might want to use, the type of transformer they use, and and, and th these are these are the results of a first time uh, trying this. You can see the this one here turned out really pretty. And, and the different grains of wood give you the different kinds of results and stuff like that. So anyway, if you like this, that's that this introduction on power supplies. Uh, not much to talk about it in, in a lot of the other videos. This just gives you an idea. Um, keep in mind this is very dangerous. Uh, use at your own risk. So hope you enjoy. Till next time, it's Dr. Hank. We're clearing out of here from Hankenstein Labs.